Hello. I'm Ryan Moody, helping you to fish smarter, not harder. In this blog post, I'm going to touch on the bane of land-based anglers' lives, getting snagged and having to re-rig, especially when you're fishing rock walls. Not only because re-rigging costs you time and money, but also leaving snag line floating in the water is not good for the environment. Remember, always take your rubbish with you. So in this blog, I'm going to show you how to tie a Pat Noster or dropper rig and get those hooks away from the bottom, away from the snags especially. Plus we're going to take a look at the sinker size and demonstrate the best way to attach your sinker so it'll fall off when it's snagged. But first, let's take a look at why you get snagged in the first place. Now one area where people go wrong is using the wrong rig in the wrong area. Now with a rock wall, most of your predators are usually where that area where your rocks end and meet the sand or mud or even a little bit closer with some species. So you don't want to be fishing right out wide when you're fishing for predators. Out there you'll get your foragers like your grunters, your brims, salmon, depending on which part of the country you're in, all those foraging type of species. If I was going to target those I would be casting right out wide away from the rocks and that's when you can use a running rig like this because you're not going to have any rocks getting in the road snagging you up. If there's a little bit of current though running along your rock wall, you will have to adjust the size of your sinkers because even if you do cast it right out, you don't want it coming right back in and getting into the danger zone once again. So that's for foragers. If I was going to target predatory fish, probably more using live bait, that's more of a dead bait kind of rig, the running rig. But this one here is your uh, dropper rig with your hook above and sinker on the bottom and what it does, it suspends. So it keeps your bait off the bottom, especially if you're nice and close to it, like in this position here where you're fishing relatively close to the rocks. Now we're going to show you how to tie the Pat Noster. Okay, first up, that's your sinker end. Then we grab how long you want it. I'm going to make this one about a metre. And then I hold it again. Then I grab another foot of line, about oh, even 40 centimetres, and bring that loop together like so. Just concertina it together. And then what we're going to do is grab the centre and twist one around the other. But we keep that same hole in the middle. You can see how I'm keeping it open with my fingers. About four times, then we open it up and we pull that tag line through, like so. And then we pull it tight, so we got that effect there. And then just wet it, pull it up tight, hook your, loop your, sink, your hook on there, and you put your sinker on the other end, and you're away. You get snagged a lot if you use ball sinkers. The secret is to use an elongated sinker on the bottom. For instance, a pencil sinker is ideal. Some of them are more elongated than others because what that does, it doesn't tend to wedge in the rocks. It tends to pull through. So the longer and skinnier your sinker, the better. Now, when it comes to attaching sinkers, like I mentioned, long elongated sinkers are better because they don't jam as much in the rocks. Now, what I like to do is simply thread your leader through the bottom here and just simply pull it through and tie a simple hitch, just once. That's all you need to do. Pull it right down towards the bottom, like so, and pull it really tight. Pull that up really, really tight so that that little knot is a tight little ball. And then we trim just underneath it. And what happens is, if this elongated sinker does get jammed up, what happens is, if, you, if you're using 20 pound line, because let's face it, you don't want to be using really light stuff in against these rocks chasing predators. What happens is, with 20 pound line, you give it enough weight, this will pull, and it'll pull through the sinker. So you're not snapping your line. The beautiful, beautiful thing is, you've only left a little bit of lead in the environment, you haven't gone and left lead and a whole heap of fishing line as well. So that's a good little tip for putting sinkers on. After a while, you'll get to know how big a knot you really need to tie or even crimp over the end a little bit so that it's around that weight just before your fishing line breaks. Uh, you will get used to that kind of thing, you just gotta play with it. Just remember, it depends on your rock wall and where you are in relation to tidal run. If there's a lot of tidal run, like the edge of a major river that has big tides, make sure you use the right size sinker, especially if you're fishing the base of the rocks because otherwise it's just gonna take you around and wash you into the rocks. You'd need just enough weight for the amount of run that you have at the time. It does pay to carry a few different weights with you, especially if you're in an area where sometimes there's no run, then all of a sudden there's a whole heap. If you're in an area like this where there's not much movement at all, very small sinkers, just enough to hold your live bait in place, or your dead pilchard or whatever it is, you might be chasing jacks with pilchards or brim. Now there's one more very important thing that um, I'd like to get across to all my students, no matter what course they're doing, is the fact that no matter what sort of area you're fishing, 
always go and have a look on a very low tide, in particular these rock walls, because you're going to find out where rubbly patches are, where there might be a yabby bed for foraging species nearby, where there might be detached rocks that have fallen out, where a bit of current touches. There's all sorts of things along here. Hopefully these little tips will help you next time you take the kids fishing so you don't get so many snags. If you like this little tip and you'd like to see more, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and if you only want some special tips that I'll send out via email only, head on over to our website www.ryanmoodyfishing.com and sign up for free email updates. Get into the great outdoors, keep fishing smarter and I'll see you next time.